Your Excellency, Mr. President, Chief of Staff to the President, President Buhari Buhari, Landmark and Legacy Projects. traditional council of the industrialist in our state. He's the chairman of Right Foods, soft drink in Nigeria that's giving Coca-Cola very stiff competition. Suleiman, uh, Mrs. Salmot. It's a steel development. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, like you said, this is a high power delegation from Ibn State. And this delegation was carefully selected to reflect the generality and representation of our people. So I have to my right um, the paramount ruler and royal majesty of Abatunde Ajayi, the Akaribo of Remoland, who is also the chairman of the Ogun State Traditional Council. To his right, I have Alaji Suleiman Adigunwa, the chairman of Right Foods, which I'm sure all of you know, um, the producer of the widely known and distributed piggy drinks. He's a foremost industrialist. He's representing the private sector uh, Kabi is representing um, all our royal fathers. And I have to my left His Excellency, former governor of Ugu State, Aremo Olusheg Moshaba, who is the leader of the party in our state and one of the leaders of the party in Nigeria representing um, our leadership. And we have from on his left um, Mrs. Salmat uh, Badru. Um, former Deputy Governor of Ogun State, who is representing our people from Ogun West. And, and why are we here today? Uh, we have come to thank Mr. President for accepting our invitation to a state visit to Ogun State, which was originally scheduled for sometime in December, but was postponed because of uh, clashes within the President's schedule and rescheduled to two Thursdays ago, I believe it was the 13th of, of January. Uh, Mr. President accepted our invitation. Not only did he accept, he accepted to commission as many of our landmark and legacy projects that could be accommodated in his schedule of that one day visit. It's not often times that you have the privilege of a sitting president come and visit the state and also particularly when you're now taking from one side of the state uh, crisscross to another section of the state. Mr. President commissioned roads, commissioned the Ekpe Jebude Road, which is about a 20-kilometer road, 
He drove on that road about almost 20 kilometers. He commissioned our city gate project, which is our new iconic monument that is located at our city gate, the interchange, uh, which is um, the crossroad um, or confluence of where the east, the central, and the western part of Gun State meet. Um, he commissioned the 42 kilometer Shagamu Abekota Road, which is a dual carriageway. Incidentally, both roads he commissioned are actually federal roads. He commissioned our housing estate, our affordable housing estate, 516 units um, that are actually completely sold out. We can't actually build fast enough. People are buying faster than we're building. And then he commissioned um, our King's Court estate, which is a medium to um, a medium class um, housing estate. Um, all these projects, five of them, you know, Mr. President spent the whole day with us and commissioned. So we, we, we thought it necessary um, to come here to thank him. He drove in total almost 60 kilometers that day. Um, and I believe that from all accounts and what he said that day and even today, I think Mr. President was impressed by the giant strides that um, we are making in Ogun State, uh, by the purposeful leadership that I believe I've been providing the good people of Ogun State. I think that we've managed to convince him that um, we have established trust and confidence between the government and the governed. And that is why um, we have come today so he knows that we are not taking it for granted. We are very thankful. And um, I believe um, KBAC also reminded Mr. President that we will be expecting him again, like he had said. Uh, we give him the key to the state, uh, so he is no uh, longer um, 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 a visitor, um, but someone who has the key to the state, and he's now an indigent of Ogun State. So he, he, of course, can come at any point in time that he wishes to come. But KBC reminded him that um, we have a project that will soon be commissioning, uh, which is actually the um, Ogun State um, International Cargo Airport Project, which is billed for completion fourth quarter of this year. And KBAC um, um, uh, nicely requested that the President consider coming back to Ogun State for that. That is why we have come here. Thank you very much. You know, that day when we retired to the lodge uh, to have lunch um, with Mr. President, Mr. President asked me, Governor, why are you not eating? I said to Mr. President, I said, President, I can't even drink uh, because I'm so excited that if I attempted to drink, I'd probably choke on the water. I, and I'm repeating this because um, it just expresses how I feel and how I feel on behalf of the good people of Ogun State. Those Mr. President's remarks, those accolades are not just for me. They are an affirmation of the successful cooperation, collaboration that exists between those of us on one part as government, the traditional institutions, the politicians, the civil society, and all the Ogun State indigenous and industrialists as a whole. Because if this cooperation didn't exist, we would not have been able to achieve all what Mr. President saw and in return um, allowed him to um, shower these praises and accolades on us. I, I, I am extremely excited. I am further motivated and encouraged. Uh, like they say, um, the, um, the, the reward for hard work is, is more hard work. Um, I encouraged to build on what we've done uh, that Mr. President has seen and, um, and that all Ubu State indigenous and all Nigerians have seen. And we indeed will continue to ensure that 
that trust that has been um, uh, mandated uh, to us by the good people of the state um, is continuously justified. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for those two questions. Um, your first question was, are there no other requests that the state has? Um, uh, let me first state that um, the five projects that you, or rather, let me answer your question directly. We had placed before Mr. President when he visited a number of requests, um, which he graciously approved right there and then. And um, we did not see any reason today to um, place before him any further requests. Uh, we are not the only state in the country. We are one state out of 36 states. I recall when Mr. President visited, we spoke to him about the Ikorodu to Shagamu um, road, which is completely almost non-existent today. It's a road that passes through um, NMPC's ordination's largest um, oil storage and also a road that leads through an industrial corridor, and as well as being a parallel road to the lagos Ibano Expressway. Um, we requested that Mr. President um, allows NMPC to use their tax credit to fund the construction of that road. And I believe Mr. President obliged us. Um, the second request we made to Mr. President was the state of roads in Adudu Ota. Um, the Ota Abekuta Road, which is also a very busy road, one of the busiest roads in Nigeria, also a federal road. Um, these are roads that we could not intervene in as a state because those roads are already under contract. The um, Epeja Bodi Road was not under contract. The Abekuta Shagamu Road was not under contract. The um, Lagos, um, Lagos, the Agbara Atondo Sada Road, which is the road leading to the biggest industrial. Um, estate in, in, in this country is also under, under contract. And that road, we are already reconstructing that road. That road will also be ready um, 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 third to fourth quarter of this year. Alongside with about a total of 300 kilometers of roads that we have either completed or we are completing that will all be ready this year. So the five projects you saw in Ogun State are not the only projects that we've constructed in Ogun State. They are the ones that you know, uh, Mr. President could make our time to commission. So you will begin to see us commission, commissioning the, the rest. And this leads to, my, to your second question, which is how has Ogun State been able to achieve uh, um, uh, these uh, successes, uh, considering that some states are having some difficulties? You know, Ogun State is a, a different state from other states. Uh, we are called the gateway state because, again, like I said earlier on, we are the only state that borders Lagos. Um, the only other border that Lagos has is the Atlantic Ocean. And you cannot go from Lagos to the rest of this country without passing through our state. Um, it means we are the expansion corridor to Lagos. We are the closest to the busiest seaport and the airport. That remains our comparative and competitive advantage over any other state. Because of that, we are the industrial capital of this country. So you find out that most of the industries that have their Financial headquarters in Lagos have the industrial headquarters in Ogun State. So what have we done as an administration differently? We've done everything we can to increase the ease of doing business in Ogun State to ensure that we convert what we call the push factor that has allowed companies to set up in Ogun State to what we call the pull factor. So we're now willfully 
putting measures in place to attract investors to live in our state. Lower tax regime, provision of transformational infrastructure, which is what is fundamental to the creation or establishment of any industry. If you look at our vision, which we had, you know, from day one, I decided that this is going to be our vision. Our vision was, is very clear. To provide a focused and qualitative governance while creating an enabling environment for a public-private sector partnership, which is fundamental to the economic growth of the state and individual prosperity. So we are merely pursuing our vision. And we are pursuing that through our five developmental pillars. We call Ishaya, I for infrastructure, S for social women and welfare, E for education, Y for youth employment and job creation, and A for agriculture. So as we pursue this vision aggressively, creating an enabling environment. We are bringing more people to Ogun State. We are providing infrastructure for them. We are providing health care for them. We are providing schools for their children. We are providing housing, affordable housing for those that are going to be working with them. We have succeeded in opening our economy up. By doing that, we have grown our IGR. By December, we have done about 100 billion in IGR. That is the highest ever almost double to what Ogun State had ever done in the past. So this has allowed us to creatively finance these laudable projects because you all know that FAC has you know, uh, continued to shrink um, because of the issues with um, 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 what the government has had to, the obligation of the federal government is that way without going into details. So we had to be very creative in, in financing and, and, and revenue generation. Um, we've put in reforms and policies in place we now have the Ogun Public-Private Partnership Office. We have the Ogun Investment Promotion Agency. We have the Ogun um, Business uh, Environment Council, which means if you are coming to do business in Ogun State today, you don't have to go from one office to the other. So we've cut off all the bureaucracy. And this is what the private sector wants to see, hear, and feel. I mean, you must remember that I come from the private sector. So we have done all these things that have opened up our economy. We have got a handle on security because you know that you know, I mean, insecurity drives away investment. Uh, today, we are known as one of the most, you know, uh, peaceful states in the country. So these are the things that have allowed us to grow our IGR, grow our economy, um, have enough to, you know, put into infrastructure development, and, uh, and so on and so forth. I hope this answers your question. Well, um, thank you for that question. Um, I would be hesitant to delve into the details of this question because, one, I'm not in any position or capacity to advise you know, the party. I am a governor. I am a member of the party. And um, I will continue to be guided by the party leadership um, in line with party discipline. Um, we have the president in place. We are the party that has formed government. Our president is leader of the party. Uh, I believe that um, His Excellency, Mr. President, will continue to offer us the guidance uh, that's required and will do that which we need to do uh, under his leadership. Uh, so I, I, I'm not sure that I am capable uh, uh, or uh, I, I have the capacity to begin to advise the party when uh, I am just a member of the party and a governor, and the party has a leader who is the president. Uh, we are aware that uh, the party is working uh, on, on, on zoning, 
and, and, and uh, uh, when that is formalized and ratified by NEC, then it will be made public. So we'll know where the chairman of the party will come from, we'll know where the president will come from, and things will evolve in, in their own time. Thank you very much.